welcome to Light Sun Church. We are the body of Jesus Christ gathering in Nairobi Umoja One Estate. Our services are every Sunday morning with prayers from 8 a.m., Bible study 9 a.m., and a worship service at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you. Light Sun Church, spiritually transformed people.
We praise your holy name, Father, for you reign on high. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. For the Lord God Almighty reigns, and he reigns forevermore. We just want you to lift up your voice to the Lord God Almighty.
partnership with God. When we worship Him with what He has blessed us with, we make possible the expansion of His kingdom in our community. 2 Corinthians 9.11, He will be enriching every way to be generous on every occasion, and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. At Light and Church, we give in the spirit of generosity to God. There is nothing we need He has withheld from us. You can participate with us right now in worshiping God through your substances. This is possible through our Lipa 9 Pesa by Goods account number 590631. Thank you for your generosity. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his mercies and years forever. We are thankful today that God's mercies are new in our lives today uh, to give us the grace to go through yet another day. I, I don't know where you are watching from, but I want to tell you good morning good afternoon and good evening from wherever you are 
on the globe. And we thank God that God has given us this opportunity for us just to fellowship together online. Remember this Lifestand Church Sunday morning service. It's our, we've been on, on a 90 day uh, journey of step up prayer and fasting and we thank God that he has brought us this far. We are remaining with about 12 days, I believe, 12 days. And we, we pray that God will give us even the grace that after this 90 days, there will be mighty breakthroughs that will happen even in this church and in, in our community as a whole. For the past about five weeks, we've been looking at the book of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. And we, we started from Nehemiah 1. Today we are on Nehemiah chapter 4. We've been looking at it from, from uh, our Thursday services and our Sunday services, which means every week we've been looking at two, two chapters every week. Today we are in chapter 8, chapter 7 I mean. And uh, I want us to just read, I'll, I'll not read the whole of the chapter today the way we did on Thursday. But I, I, I'll just read up to around verse 4. And uh, there, we, there is where I'll be basing my, my talk or my, the study today. And the Bible says, I'm, I'm reading from the uh, King James Version, the original, the, the old English. The Bible says uh, in verse 1, Now it came to pass when the walls was built. Remember this now after post the rebuilding, post the rebuilding of the walls. And it says that, now it came to pass when the walls was built and I had set up the doors and the porters, which, which is another word for, for gatekeepers. And the singers and the Levites were appointed, verse 2, that I gave my brother Hanani, you remember Hanani in chapter 1, the one who brought the news about the walls. Now he comes to a point that he's given a responsibility that I give my brother Hanani and Han Hananiah, the ruler of, of the, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. For he was a faithful man and feared God above many. This man feared God above many. Verse 3 says that, And I said to them, he said to Hanani and Hananiah, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot, the sun be hot. And while they stand by, let them shut the door and bar them and appoint watchers of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everyone in his, in his watch and everyone to be opposite his house. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not built. And my God put in my heart to gather together the nobles. Remember the nobles, the guys who did not put their hands to work. The Lord put in my heart to gather the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of them which came up at the first and found written therein. Then from verse, verse 6 up to about verse 70, verse 73 there, he, he, he gives uh, an account of the ge genealogy of the guys he found, the, the list that he found. The, when Ezra got into Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, these are the guys who came with him. Therefore, he reads the list of these people. I want us to pray as we begin. Lord, we thank you because of the reading of your word. I pray that, Lord, as we study it, O oh God, may you open our hearts to even, even perceive and get what you're telling each and every one of us, O oh God. You may be speaking one, 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 one message, but you're speaking it differently to, with, uh, to many people, Lord. I pray that, Lord, may you minister to each and every individual, O oh God, where they are at in their walk with you, oh God. We thank you and we give you praise for it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe somebody say amen. We thank God. I'm, I'm excited because uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah is a great story, is a great lesson for me personally that I can learn things and stuff that uh, in my walk with God. And we say that the book of 
the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah initially were one book. Before the Bible was divided into different books, this was, this was one book. It was one book. And the, uh, the book of ne Ezra talks about the rebuilding of the temple. God gives puts in the heart of Ezra to go back to rebuild the temple. And we, we, we look at people like Zerubbabel, people who go back to rebuild the temple. Then the book of, of Nehemiah talks about the rebuilding of the walls, the rebuilding of the walls. God put it again in the heart of Nehemiah. Remember now at this point, 13 years after, at this point now the, the, the temple in Jerusalem had been built, but now the walls were running in ruins. Therefore God puts in the heart of somebody called Nehemiah to go back and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And we say that Nehemiah and Ezra are types of the Holy Spirit. We say that Ezra, Ezra, his name means the help of God. Then uh, Nehemiah talks about the comfort of God, which means the the working of the Holy Spirit. When when the walls are, uh, 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 when Nehemiah gets this burden, he comes back to Jerusalem and he rebuilds the wall. In verse eight, now in chapter eight, the Bible talks about now post the rebuilding of the walls post the rebuildings of, of the walls. Remember, we say that uh, the work of Nehemiah as the type of the Holy Spirit was to come and rebuild the temple, to come and rebuild the spirit man, the spirit man. You are the man that Ezra comes, a picture, a symbol of Ezra comes in and rebuilds the temple, the temple, the temple, which means that he gives the people access to God. He gives you an access to God. The, the first work of God in your life is that he rebuilds the temple. He, he brings back the, the fellowship that was lacking between you and him. That's the work of salvation. And it is the, 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 we see the hand of the Holy Spirit in drawing somebody to salvation. If you are born again today, you are not born again by accident. It is not because of your strength or because you found God. It is because the Holy Spirit drew you to God. He, he drew you to God. Therefore, when you are born again, the, then the, the, the Lord sends you the Spirit, the Comforter. Jesus says that, that if I don't go, the Comforter will not come. Hallelujah. The Comforter will not come. Nehemiah comes to rebuild the walls. And we say that the walls are the defense system of a city. The walls are the the soul the soulish the soul realm of of somebody of of, of a human being of a Christian, and uh, it does not matter how much the temple has been rebuilt. If you, the walls are in ruin, you the you are still in danger. You are still in danger from the enemy. Therefore, the walls have to rebuild, be rebuilt. The walls we said talks about your soul, the soul realm where the emotions are, where the, your thought life is. See, the, 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 the soul realm is where uh, the control of somebody is. If your soul is not changed, if your soul is not, if the Holy Spirit is not in control of your soul, it means that your body will follow whatever your soul is telling you. If your soul is not under the control of the Holy Spirit, if your thought life, if your emotions, if your intellect is not under the control of the Holy Spirit, you, are, you will be controlled by anything that comes in the, in, the, in, the, in the city, in the temple. Hallelujah. Therefore, the Holy Spirit comes in to rebuild the walls. The Holy Spirit comes in to rebuild your mind. The Holy Spirit comes... Uh, to cost you to 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 build a, a wall system around the city the, the the temple around you you have your wall system has to be built your wall system has to be rebuilt i hope we are understanding up to there then in verse 8 now the chapter 8 chapter 7 the bible says that now the the this is a scenario where now the the soul realm has been built, which means that this is now a person who is thinking in accordance to the word of God. He is thinking according to the will of God. He is thinking about things according to the scripture. The Bible says in Romans chapter chapter 2, chapter 12, verse 2, that 
don't be conformed to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind this is this is somebody who has been transformed by the renewing of his mind which is the work of the holy spirit in your life you got to yield to the holy spirit for your mind to be renewed hallelujah he comes to this is a man now whose mind has been renewed according to the word of god hallelujah now it, the bible says that now it came to pass that the, that the walls was built the walls was built this is now a believer who has a a security system around him he thinks right he, he he his emotions are in the right place he does not just there is not just outburst uh, fr- with things out of out of nowhere he he thinks he decides uh, stuff in his life according to the word of god the the walls were rebuilt and i had set up the doors he had set up the doors and the porters and the gatekeepers hallelujah when the holy spirit builds your wall the the your the 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 protection system around the city you got to know that the holy spirit does not just shut the city in the holy spirit does not just shut you in the bible says that he gives you doors he, the the doors he i had i had set up doors hallelujah you have doors in 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 the city there are doors that the holy spirit has left for 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 you to be to have control over what comes in the city and what leaves the city hallelujah god has set doors in place in your life if the, the walls if you yield to the holy spirit to appoint that the walls are are put up god leaves to you doors which means that these are manageable entrances into the city into your life hallelujah which means ladies and gentlemen you cannot just allow anything to get into the city you cannot just allow anything to get into the city there are three there are three responsibilities that god gives you as a believer when the walls have been rebuilt the bible says that the first person he put he appoints what the porters the gatekeepers god has appointed you because the walls have been rebuilt because the holy spirit has has rebuilt done a great work in your life to rebuild the walls he puts you first of all he puts the gates within the walls then he puts you as a gatekeeper which means that you got to be careful you got to be able to monitor and to to regulate what comes in the city something that comes in the city should come in with your permission hallelujah because the enemy knows that there is no other entrance in the city except i use the doors that the holy spirit has has made but even that door he has put you the first responsibility is that you got to be a gate keeper in the city you got to be a gate keeper in the city the second responsibility that god the holy spirit gives to you is that he wants you to be a singer in the city god uh, the second responsibility the, the reason why even the, the 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 temple was being built in the first place the reason why the walls were being built so that your mind does not just go anywhere was that you become a worshiper of yahweh you become a worshiper of elohim you become a worshiper of god you don't just worship anything that your mind tells you to do which means that god re- expects you to be a worshiper to be a singer somebody who can give him praise somebody who can give him thanks somebody who can who can come before him with thanksgiving in your heart hallelujah the second responsibility that, that god gives you is that you become a man of worship to him you become a singer in 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 a, within the city number three, the third responsibility that that god gives you is that you got to be a levite remember the levites were the the the, the priests the priests were part of the levites which means that you got to be a man who offers sacrifices to god 
offer sacrifices to God. Offer sacrifices to God. If the city is going to remain intact, you've got to be a man who offers sacrifices to God. Hallelujah. He puts the, the Levites, the verse 2, the Bible says that, and I gave my brother Hanani. You remember Hanani is the man who, who came from Jerusalem. When he went to Nehemiah, it is him who gives the report of the state of the people of Israel to Nehemiah. He is the man, in fact, who, who like started the whole thing. The whole thing started from Hanani. Then it says that Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, uh, these two guys were given charge over Jerusalem. And the Bible says that why were they given charge over Jerusalem? Why, what is the reason why these two guys were, were, were selected among the whole country? The Bible says that for he was, they were, these two were a faithful man. And number two, he feared God above many. The two qualities that will cause God to use you is that first of all, you got to be faithful. You got to be faithful. God will not entrust any one of us with any task if he does not see faithfulness in our lives. If he does not see you to be a man who uh, is faithful, he will not give you uh, any task in the kingdom. That's why the Bible even says that God will not give you what is yours if you are not faithful in what is another man's. The first quality that God looks on any one of us before he gives you anything, before he gives you a ministry, before he gives you anything that is, that is, uh, that is, that is going to bring uh, glory to his name is that he looks for faithfulness. Are you faithful, my brother, my sister? Are you faithful in the thing that God has called you? Faithfulness means that uh, obedience in the same direction. You're, you're, you're obedient towards the same direction. You're not a man who changes direction depending on the circumstances of life that you see. It, obedience means, faithfulness means that you're obedient you are obediently walking towards the same direction that God told you to do. Hallelujah. God, the first thing that God looks on in any man before he gives him a ministry. When I talk about ministry, I'm not just talking about church work. I'm talking about anything that God has given you to do with your hands. He says that he looks for you. He gives you that thing because you are faithful. Because you are faithful. The book of 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2, verse 2, I believe. Uh, Paul says that the thing that I've, 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 I've taught you, entrust it in the hands of faithful men. Entrust it in the hands of faithful men. Paul tells Timothy that if you are going to appoint anybody, if you are going to train anybody, if you are going to give anybody a, a place to serve in the ministry, the first quality that you want, I want you to look at is that you got to look at the faithfulness of that man. Are you faithful with what God has given you? Are you faithful with what God has given you? Hallelujah. Second, first Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, Paul says that, I thank Christ, I thank Christ who has counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. God will not put you in the ministry if you are not a faithful man. The first quality that you go to cultivate in your life is that you got to be a faithful man. You got to be a faithful man even if nothing seems to be working. You got to maintain maintain your obedience even when nothing seems to be happening. You got to cultivate the heart of somebody like Noah. Noah is told to build an ark. The rain is coming. Noah, what is a rain? I don't know what rain is. But rain is coming. In fact, it's not just rain that is coming. There is a flood that is coming. I don't know how. I've never seen a flood in my life. But I'm going to be faithful to 
the, the, the thing that I've been called to do. I've just been called to rebuild the ark. I don't know what is going to happen thereafter, but I'm going to be faithful. God will give you a ministry only if he sees faithfulness in you. I have appointed Hanani and Hananiah because this man, this man, this man are faithful. Number two, this man fear God above everybody else. Hallelujah. The, 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 the second thing that will cause God to give you a ministry is that God uh, will look for an aspect of reverence to him. Do you fear God or do you fear men? Do you fear God or do you fear men? Are you a man who will do what God wants you to do, even if men tell you, if, even if it goes against the instructions of men? Hallelujah. Paul again says in Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 that if I feared, if I feared man, then I will not be, I will not be a servant of God. Hallelujah. You are, the, the reverence that you have for God ought to be above the reverence that you have for men. Hallelujah. When the disciples were told over and over in the book of Acts not to preach in the name of Jesus, over and over they say that will we obey man or do we obey God? That's the dilemma that sometimes you will get yourself in. Do you obey men or do you obey God? That's the second quality that God looks for anybody whom he is going to appoint in the ministry. A man who fears God above all the rest. Hallelujah. Those are the two qualities. You, If God is going to use you in this generation, and I believe God is raising up a people whom he is going to use in the, this generation, a people, number one, who are faithful, who are faithful in the place that God has called them in. Number two, are people who are fear, who have the fear of God in their lives. Hallelujah. When it comes to a time of you choosing between pleasing man and pleasing God, my brother, my sister, choose to please God rather than man. Hallelujah. Verse 2, then I gave my brother, verse 3, and I said to them, let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. <laughs> Don't let the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, that you've got to be a gatekeeper of the gates that God has given you to, 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 to take care of. The doors that God has given you, you've got to be a gatekeeper. You've got to be a gatekeeper to make sure that there is nothing that will creep in unawares. Hallelujah. There is nothing that will creep in unawares. Sometimes there are things that creeps in the city unawares. And it is the work of the gatekeeper. You are the gatekeeper of this city. The city that God has given you. You are the gatekeeper. The first responsibility I told you is for you to become a gatekeeper. And the Jeremiah, Nehemiah tells them that you got to wait until the sun is hot for you to open the gate. Which means if you open the gates early, the enemy has got the tendency of creeping into the, into the city without your knowledge. Hallelujah. You got to be a man who opens the door, open the gates when the sun is hot. Don't open the gate when the sun is still, uh, has not risen up. When there is no sun, sunrise still, then you go out and open the door. You know in these cultures, the, the, doors were, the, doors to the gates were opened very early. It's like in our city, if you wake up at 3, you will find the, the markets are already opened and people are working there. 3 o'clock in the morning. Nehemiah tells them that don't open the door. There's, there's a danger. If you, if, if you open the doors at three, it is still dark. People can still creep in. There are still doctrines that can creep in and you are not aware. Let the sun come up so that your vision will, be, will not be blurred. You will be able to see clearly to know who is 
entering the city. The Bible gave a warning about false doctrine says that there are those who have come in unawares. The enemy has got the ability to bring in people, mercenaries, into the city unawares. Therefore, you've got to get to a place in your life, ladies and gentlemen, that you don't open your doors early. You let God uh, shine the light. Let the sun of righteousness rise and be hot in your life. That's when you open the doors. Hallelujah. And I say to them, no, let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. And while they, they, they stand by, let them shut the doors and bar them and op appoint watchers of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everyone in his watch and everyone to be opposite his house. You've got to be attentive all the time, all the time, opposite your house. Be attentive, be attentive. Verse 4, the Bible says that now the city was large and great, but the people were few. The city was large and great. Jerusalem was large and great, but the people were few, which means that, ladies and gentlemen, you got to know uh, the way we were told, uh, Pastor Max said earlier that the the call was made for people to come back to Jerusalem. But of all the millions of people who were in Persia at that time, only 2% of the Israelites chose to come back to, the, to, to Jerusalem. And they, when the walls are finished, Nehemiah begins to, to take account of what was available in the city. Then he discovers that the city was big, but the people was small. The city was big, but the people were small. It means, ladies and gentlemen, that the, the work of the Holy Spirit, to the work that the Holy Spirit accomplished in rebuilding the walls was done by only a handful of people, by only a few people. We are serving a God who does not work with the majority. If God was a Democrat, he could have said that uh, because only 2% have accepted to come to, to Jerusalem. Let's just abort this thing. But even with 2%, God was able to accomplish a great task that he had. I don't know what percentage you have today. I don't know what percentage you are today. But whichever percentage you are, God is still able to accomplish great things in your life. We are serving a God who does not work with, with great multitudes. Remember even in the, in the story of, 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 of is it Gideon. Gideon is, has 3,000 people. He is confident. His confidence is in the, the multitude of the army that he has going into this battle. But it gets to a point that God says that I can't use these guys. These guys are too many for me. <laughs> these guys are too many for me. We've got to get a strategy to streamline so that we can have a few. Sometimes the thing that God has called you to do, it has been going around the same mountain because you are too many. You are too many for God to use. You are too many for God to use. God sometimes uses the few to accomplish his purpose. He, he comes to a place, he sees that in Jerusalem, the city is big. The city is big, but the people are few. Then he, he comes to a place that he begins to take a censor of, 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 of what he had, of the people he had available. He finds a genealogy of people who came back with, with Zerubbabel. And uh, it's in, in, important for you to know that there were two genealogies. There, were, there was a genealogy, a record of people who came, who, who, who like arrived in Jerusalem with Ezra. And then there is another one of people who left, who left the exile with Ezra. And uh, the people, the, list, the two lists are uh, like separate. It's like they, there was some editing that happened. The list of the people who, got, who arrived in Jerusalem is not the same list 
of the people who left Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Who left the exile. It means, ladies and gentlemen, that there are people who when Ezra said that we are going back to Jerusalem, we are going to rebuild the temple, we are going to, to do a mighty work for God. Who is going with us? And there were people who said, sign me in. And everybody was excited about this. And, and, and even in the midst of the excitement, there are people who signed in. Their names are in the first uh, genealogy. But it means that these guys did not get out to step into the plan of God. It means that, ladies and gentlemen, there are, there are some times that God calls us. God, when God calls you, the calling is exciting. We say, sign me in. I'm going all the way with you. I'm going to accomplish this with your help. Uh, even though none go with me, still I will follow. There is no turning back. But even though we speak it, but we don't act on what we are saying, which means that there are people who respond to Ezra, but they don't walk the talk. When they get into, 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 into Jerusalem, the, their names are missing from the list. Their names are missing from the list. Their names are not there. It's because these guys signed in, but they did not walk the talk. Some even started to walk the, the talk, but in the midst of the walk, they fell along the way, which means that they did not arrive where God was calling them to. God wants you, ladies and gentlemen, to be a people who don't just respond to the call, but people who step into the call and walk the call up to the end. In Matthew chapter 21, Jesus gives a story of a man who had two sons. The Bible says that he goes to the first son and he tells the first son, he gives the first son as a task. And the first son is excited, tells the father that, hey, I'm going to do what you have told me to do. But the Bible, Jesus says that this son does not do the will of the father. He goes to the second son and he tells him what the a task to do. The second son says that I will not do it. But somewhere along the line, the, man, the, the boy's heart is changed and he does what the father told him to do. And Jesus asked that at the end of it, who did the will of the father? God does not just want you to, to say, be excited about what he has told you, but he wants you to actually do what he has told you to do. God wants that at the end of it, that your name will be in the list of those who accomplished what he intended for you to do. Hallelujah. God wants you to accomplish what he has called you to do. It is not enough for you to start, but it is and it's good for you to finish. Paul comes to the tail end of his life. He says that I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my race. I have finished my course. God wants you to finish what he has called you to do. What has God called you to do? Some of you have been excited, but you have not started it. It does not please God. Your excitement does not please God until you begin to act, acting on what God has said is called faith. Faith, uh, the Bible says that in, 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 in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, that without faith, without acting on what God has told you, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God if you are not acting on what God has told you. It does not please God. It does not please God for you to, to have the Bible. You know all the promises of God, but you are not acting on any. You know all the instructions of God, but you are not acting on any. You know what the heart of the Father is, but you are not doing it. You are not doing it. In the end, in the end, the, the, the second gene genealogy in the, in the book of uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, there are, chapter 7, there are people whose names are added in whose name were not in the original list of the people who left exile. Hallelujah. It means that they are in the kingdom of God, they are the two sons category. 
of people who uh, people who did not sign up initially. Their names were not initially in the register. But along the way, they joined in the journey and they were a people who were found in the register. Hallelujah. And these are the people, the Bible says in the book of, uh, the book of uh, Nehemiah chapter 7, that these people's genealogy were not known. Which means they, they, they didn't know where these guys came from. They, did, they were just like a people who were engrafted therein. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are in your walk with God. God wants you to finish the walk. Hallelujah. I want us to pray and just ask God. Be honest with God. Tell him where you are. Tell him where you are. Sometimes you have not started the walk. But just tell him that, Lord, forgive me. And sometimes you told him that you are going to do it and you have not done anything. You have not lifted a finger. God says, God still has a heart for you. The instruction that he gave you initially is the instruction that he wants you to begin walking in. Faithfully walk in what God has called you. Some of you have, have, have been in ministry, you have been doing something for God, you have been serving God. And uh, when I talk about ministry, again, I'm not talking about church work. I'm talking about that assignment that God has given you. You are in that service, but you have not, you have not been seeing things working. And uh, it has been causing discouragement in your life. I want to pray that God will give us a spirit of faithfulness. A spirit of faithfulness. Paul says that God has counted me faithful. I thank Christ who has counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. God put you there because he knows that you have what it takes to fulfill his work in that area. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have counted us faithful, putting us in the ministry, putting us in the service that you have put us. Oh God, some of us are just, uh, some of us are, uh, teachers some of us are bible teachers some of us are student teachers uh, by uh, we teach uh, kids some of us are doctors some of us are lawyers or oh god some are even pastors lord some are students lord the ministry that you've given us lord we thank you because you have counted us faithful putting us there lord i pray that may you cultivate help us to cultivate a spirit of faithfulness and a fear for god a fear that will not cause us to give up in the, in the, in, 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 in the face of trouble and, and pressures of God. A fear that will cause us to always choose you among every other choice that is available. Lord, I thank you. May you forgive us, Lord. Sometimes, Lord, you, you gave us a call and we have not started the work. We, we promised you things. We gave you a vow and we, those vows we have not accomplished, oh God. We pray that, Lord, may you forgive us. Give us the grace to start the journey that, Lord, we will not give up in the middle of the journey, but, Lord, we will come to a place of finishing the journey, knowing that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginner of this journey and you are the end of this journey. We thank you and we give you praise, O oh God, for it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe and somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you again for joining us for this service. I believe that our, the teachings that we are giving is, is, is beneficial to your life. Uh, me, I, it, it is beneficial to my life. There are things that I'm looking at in the book of Nehemiah and I'm seeing things to rectify and things to look, up, uh, look at. And I believe that you are going to not just be a hearer of the word, but you are going to apply the word in your life because God wants to take you somewhere that you have never been before. And if you are faithful with what God has given you now, God will take you even further than you ever thought that you will get to. We are getting first getting close to our anniversary conference, online conference. Remember, we are having it from the 26th to the 2nd of August. And uh, we are having great, great men of God that have, 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 uh, are coming in to be with us during this time. Uh, we, we ask you to just join us. 
be part of what God is doing here. I believe that five years, ten years down the line, our lives will not be the same again. Even this church will not be the same again because God will have done something. And it starts with this conference. We are having uh, great men of God coming in. We are having Pastor Chris, uh, Newbath Covenant Church coming in right here we are having uh, Pastor Rodney Bible Life Ministries in Botswana, one of the largest churches in Botswana. He's a pastor of, of, of uh, the Bible Life in, in Lobatse, and uh, he's a great friend, friend for many years. We are having Pastor Ray, Pastor Ray from South Africa, and uh, he's also a very good friend of ours. He's, is gracing the conference. We are having Pastor Charles. Pastor Charles is is one of us based in the United States of America. He's doing a great work down there. He has the grace of God in his life. We are having Pastor Burale, the man of God. I believe that this man is so graced in many areas. He's a man who wears many hats and he's coming. We are excited that he's coming. We don't believe what the world is saying about any of us we believe the report of the Lord we are excited that this man of God is coming uh, with the great anointing that he has and we are having again Pastor Mike Pastor Mike Oguda he was here with us uh, last year and he's coming he's coming to to for this conference again he's, he'll be one of the great preachers He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's doing a great work in, in, in the UK together with his, uh, his wife, Pastor Grace Oguda. And uh, again, we are having, we are having uh, Pastor Mark Odongo, who is our host, one of our hosts here. He's coming with a great anointing, with the anointing of Samson. And uh, I believe that this is going to be a time of great manifestation of the presence of God in our lives. We are having, of, co of course, I'll be there. And uh, we believe that God is going to shift us. God is going to step us up during this conference. Uh, we are also having a great worship team that will be joining us uh, here live. And uh, we believe that God is going to cause a great change in each and every one of our lives. Remember, it will be three o'clock and five and eight o'clock at night. We'll be having two sessions, two services per day. And we believe that God is going to do a great work in your life. Stay tuned. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Let people know that this thing is going to be happening. It's going down here at Lyston Church. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, let's see you on Thursday and I pray that you have a great weekend ahead and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Hallelujah, shalom and bye-bye.